Let's say I presented you with two different Nintendo Switches. One is just the basic gray normal Switch, and the other one is made out of mercury and has Joy-Cons that are shaped like Mewtwo. Now, which one would you want more? That's right, you'd probably pick the one made out of mercury. Even though it would probably kill you, it looks really cool, so it's worth it. That's kind of what limited edition consoles are, just prettier looking consoles. They don't really do anything different from the normal console, but they are still so cool. I feel like everyone has a respect for these things to some degree, but everyone knows about limited edition consoles, so I wanted to look at it at a deeper level. I wanted to find out what are the absolute rarest Nintendo consoles in history. Consoles so rare that only a handful of people in the entire world own them. I searched through every generation of Nintendo's consoles to see which ones are the rarest. So here are the absolute rarest Nintendo consoles, starting from here. I'm starting with the Game Boy because it's probably the best first example of some really cool and rare limited edition consoles. The NES and SNES had some stuff, but with Nintendo's first handhelds, they really encouraged having your own distinct looking console. With a bunch of different colors to choose from and even stickers of all things to make your Game Boy look cooler, I'd honestly say this is where real custom consoles started. Sure, stickers aren't fully fledged custom consoles, but the spirit was there which was a start for limited edition consoles. Nintendo clearly wanted to embrace this idea of how do we make this thing look gas? So in the 27th issue of Nintendo Power, a little contest was announced, calling all proud Game Boy owners to draw their own sick design onto this little template. And Nintendo would look at the coolest submissions and actually manufacture real consoles based on the coolest designs, and then give these consoles to the people who submitted that design. It was a really cool contest, I won't lie. Countless designs were submitted, but only a few were made into actual Game Boys, and here they are. These were all made into real Game Boys, and they are pretty elusive. We have a picture of this one, but that's it. The other two aren't even documented online. And who even knows what the hell could have happened to these things? Like, they're probably long fucking gone by now. I really wanted to see how this one would have even looked in real life, but again, who knows what happened to these things. They're fucked. There were actually more Game Boys made from this contest, though. The runner-ups from the contest would each get their own custom Game Boys as well, but the twist here is it wouldn't actually be based off of the design they submitted. Instead, Nintendo made these three designs in advance for the runner-ups to have if they, you know, runner-upped. So even though Betsy didn't get their dream panda Game Boy, they still got one of these three custom consoles that we actually do have pictures of, and they do look pretty cool. The six Game Boys made from this contest were all one of a kind, and there were never more produced. No matter if you won this contest, or if you were a runner-up, you still got your own exclusive one-of-a-kind Game Boy, which is honestly still a win regardless. Now, these are genuinely cool-looking consoles, but honestly a lot of the rarest Game Boys aren't even that cool-looking. They just, like, maybe have some words on it sometimes, maybe a small logo if they were in the mood for it. And that's all they really are. I mean, they are still rare, so I'm gonna at least show them, but most of them aren't really worth talking about because you can summarize them in a sentence. The idea of custom consoles was still pretty new, so it's kind of to be expected, I guess. But there are some random bangers in these simple ones, I can't lie. Like the Backstreet Boys Game Boy. The Backstreet Boys apparently did a tour in Japan and they gave away a Game Boy. And dude, you just can't comprehend how much I respect that concept. Can people just start making Game Boys for random garbage? And only Game Boys? Maybe if you like bowl a perfect game at your local bowling place, you get a custom Game Boy. Maybe mod it to make the startup animation to be one of those videos that play when you get a strike or some bullshit. Either I'm dumb as hell, or like this has insane potential and nobody's doing it. That's all I got for the original Game Boy though. But I mean, we're not done with rare consoles for at least a little while, you know, trust me on that one. And because I know I'm going to get comments about this, no, this does not count. And I'm just going to say this as a general rule going forward. If the console wasn't custom made by a company, then it's not going to be on this list, bro. Like, technically, this would be a rare console, yeah. But that opens up a whole other can of worms, and it's just not a limited edition console at the end of the day. Same with, like, prototype consoles. Those are always going to be rare because they were never meant to be given by the public. Alright, uh, Game Boy Color. It's the Game Boy, but it now has color. There's a couple bangers on this one. Like the German Club Nintendo Ocarina of Time Game Boy Color. It looks pretty cool. There were apparently 11 of these things made. They were given away in some sort of sweepstake to people who had the magazine back in the day. But there's a variant of this Game Boy that's even rarer. The Black Zelda Game Boy. This one is pretty elusive. It's not even fully known how many exist, but it's said to be three total. It was given away in the same sweepstakes, but there's like way less information on this one out there. This is a mysterious and pretty badass looking console. 
Now on the topic of badass, the orange soda Game Boy. And you thought I was stupid for suggesting a bowling Game Boy when they made one for orange soda. If you drank this specific brand of orange soda and for some reason looked underneath the bottle cap and saw that there was an S underneath the cap, you just earned yourself an orange soda Game Boy, bro. Now Slam is a really cool name, but there's actually layers to this. The original name of the brand is actually called Marinda. Slam is what it's called in Italy, and only Italy, which is why it's so rare. You see, the Marinda Game Boy is common as fuck. Everyone has this console. There were thousands of these made and just given away. Some Redditor was able to buy one for 50 bucks, and I know for a fact he wasn't lying because why would he lie? They must have made like fucking five of these things and just stopped because why would you make more? It only works as a marketing stunt for Italy. So what I'm basically trying to say is if you own the mythical Slam Orange Game Boy, you are probably one of the coolest people alive. Now instead of having to win with luck through sweepstakes, let's talk about a Game Boy you had to earn by having skill. The Shirin the Wanderer console. This is a Japanese exclusive N64 game I've never heard of, and by speedrunning it you could win a custom Game Boy Color that's designed after it. The goal was to beat the final boss of the game as fast as you could, and the top 10 fastest times submitted would win the Game Boy Color. And you would apparently also win a Demon Slang certification plate, whatever that means. This Game Boy is pretty lit. I personally have orange soda Game Boy over it, but this one's pretty cool too. Now the last Game Boy Color I'm going to talk about is this one with Pikachu on it. It's just a simple wholesome looking Game Boy. Only one of these exists, and it was given away in one of Nintendo's stores in Germany. The only image we have of this one is, uh, as you've seen, one with a fat fucking watermark on it, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. But I've talked about the Game Boy all damn day, so I'm going to switch it up real quick. I'm talking about these two finally. I'm going to be pretty brief because again, this was still in the caveman age of limited edition consoles. The biggest example I could even find was the Cashman Super Famicom. It's very basic looking, but it's cool for the sole reason of probably being the only custom SNES that's this rare. It literally just has Cashman on it, and I was wondering what the hell even Cashman was, and apparently it's just some really short manga that the creator of Dragon Ball made on the side. I just thought that it was kind of interesting. It's a super specific thing to make a console variant out of though. That's literally it for the SNES though. <laughs> and uh, the NES, that thing has Jack. There's this NES that appeared in the Nintendo World Championships, but it doesn't look any different, which low-key kind of blows because the controllers look different, why wouldn't the console? And I'm gonna be honest, I'm already kind of done with these two consoles, there's really nothing else I got. Okay, besides the SNES M16. Yeah, not a rare console, I know, but I found this while researching and I really wanted to talk about it. This is a real rare controller that was made for this system, and like, am I the stupid one for not knowing this was a thing? Cause like, how has nobody talked about this? Yeah, there's the NES Zapper, but the SNES M16, bro? Yeah? You thought that was a good idea? It was made for the actual US Army to train their aim. Came with this little game where you could use it too, it's ridiculous. Like imagine booting up Super Mario World and then you plug in the SNES M16 to play 1-1. You can't tell me that wouldn't be sick. The Nintendo 64 and the GameCube. A little two-in-one for you because the N64 only has one really rare console. Meaning there is a definitive rarest Nintendo 64 out there. And this is it. You cannot tell me this isn't hard. It's based off of that one third person shooter where you play as a bee with a gun. It was given away in some Nintendo and Ubisoft toasted sweepstakes in Germany, and there's sadly no specifics on this one. But to be honest, if I had to assume, it was probably just signing up for it and maybe getting it. Low-key doubt you had to speedrun Buck Bumble to win this one, but that's just me. And God, is this thing so fucking cool. This is something I'd want to own. Turn on my Buck Bumble N64 to then put in my copy of Banjo-Tooie so I can talk to Klungo some more. This is my ultimate dream. Now the GameCube. So far, household consoles haven't had too many rare goodies, but this thing has a couple, that's for damn sure. Like the Star Fox Assault GameCube. Now this thing is pretty cool. But the reasoning on why this console is rare is honestly probably my favorite. So this console was supposed to be given away in Germany in yet another magazine giveaway. It was for the magazine's 8th anniversary, right? The magazine being called Endzone. But this was actually a really cool giveaway, because not only was this Star Fox Assault console up for grabs, but also a Yoshi-themed Game Boy Advance SP, and this DS that has Mario swimming on it. These all look pretty cool, but they actually were never given away in the sweepstakes. And the reasoning as to why is where it gets so good. Because the geniuses behind the magazine just forgot to include instructions on how to actually enter the damn giveaway. They put these pretty pictures of all these consoles celebrating 8 years of their cool Nintendo magazine just to forget how to tell people how to even win these consoles. 
And these things actually look kind of sick too. Big fan of the Mario swimming one personally. But all these things were just lost because nobody got them. And believe it or not, it happened like again from the same magazine end zone. There was another GameCube that was never given away. The Incredibles GameCube was also doomed to never be given out. And that's just so entertaining to me. That's such a specific problem to be happening to a company. Can you even like imagine being in a situation like this? Like you're the writer for this magazine and you screw up. Well, fuck. Now you got the Yoshi SP stuck in the office. And everyone's like, well, that sucks. But you know, you're human. You, we, you make mistakes, right? But then the same shit happens again. But with the Incredibles GameCube, dude, they must have been pissed. I hope they made whoever screwed this one up keep the Incredibles console. Then I hope he had to like do the walk of shame back home, walk through the door, then explain to his family how he's now down a job and now stuck with a one of a kind GameCube with Mr. Fucking Incredible on it. Dog. This is the coolest console known to man. The Donkey Konga Cube. Nintendo used this to promote Donkey Konga, it was never officially available to buy, but it exists out there. Somewhere. This console not only features this roided up Kong, but also this honestly sick ass color scheme as well. Even if it didn't have this DK on it, it just looks good. But now we got the final trilogy of GameCubes here. We got the Metroid Prime 2 console given away in some French Nintendo magazine. Great, it looks really cool, there's just not much to it. Four of these were made. Then a lot of GameCubes with the MTV logo on it. More MTV GameCubes than the world has ever seen or needed. These were given away on the MTV show itself. And finally, the last rare GameCube, and this is a big one. The Luigi's Mansion GameCube. We've talked about so many random giveaways, but this one is yet another console that required raw skill and talent to have earned at the 2002 Nintendo Championships. This was a gauntlet of some of the most fierce and competitive Nintendo games released up until this point. Round 1 consisted of three different games, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, Wave Race Blue Storm, and Pikmin. So how this shit show worked was that throughout playing a bit of each game you would earn points. Like in Pikmin, the goal was to see how many Pikmin each player could collect in a single in-game day. And they would keep track of that and earn points based off of it. Tony Hawk, you'd do the tricks and get points, and for Wave Race, they would apparently take away some of your points. Depending on how long you took to finish the race, that game could only hurt your score. Which is interesting, but sure it works. The top 16 people with the highest scores would progress. Now round 2 was Super Smash Bros. Melee 1v1s. There were definitely some hot sets here, I was there, trust me. This guy's fox was nice as hell. And the player count would go down to 8. Round 3, Need for Speed. This game would cut down our roster from 8 to 4, then the semifinals would occur. NHL, the GameCube hockey game. And then finally, the finals. Mark vs. Jan Eric, best of 3. Different games would be played for each game. Game 1, Ice Climber. Mark wins. Game 2, Time Splitters 2. Jan Eric wins. Then Game 3, Mario Kart 64 to settle it all. Jan Eric was in the lead on the final lap of the race, but then Mark popped a blue shell. Mark crosses the finish line and wins. He earns his ass a whole ass setup. This was probably peak for 2002, but the most prized possession was definitely that Luigi's Mansion GameCube, one of a kind. Now that we're done with the cube, we can move up a generation to the two Game Boy Advances. And let me introduce you to the Hot Violet Game Boy Advance. This might be an underwhelming looking console at first, but at least it has something to it. It's supposed to be based off of one of the F-Zero cars, that being Hot Violet, which is neat and all, but compare this to a normal Game Boy Advance and you see what I mean. To earn this one, you had to finish a race as fast as you could and try to get the lowest time possible. Top 3 fastest times would get their hands on a Hot Violet Game Boy Advance. And it's low key an underwhelming prize comparing it to the original, but it was in a magazine. The people who tried to win it knew what they were getting into. And that's low key on them. They spent their sweet ass time grinding this game, their fault if they didn't think it was worth it. But here's another cooler looking GBA. The one made for Golden Sun. This was, you know, yet another simple magazine giveaway, because of course it was. But this one looks pretty cool, it looks pretty regal. And I personally think that's a pretty good adjective to describe this thing. Just a simple and fine ass console. Moving on to the next GBA, we got the Play for America set. This one's kinda pushing it a little, I won't lie, but it's interesting so I'm gonna talk about it. So what we got here is three different GBAs that were decorated by three different famous athletes. How to win one of these is you would actually vote on which one you think looks the best. And then you were put into a raffle, and if your name got drawn, you would get the GBA you voted for. In celebration of this really cool event, Nintendo also donated $3,000 to the charity of each of the athletes' choice. 
Now, why I said this was pushing it is because, I mean, it wasn't company-made per se. Nintendo just put three dudes in a room and made them each do arts and crafts with some Game Boys. But the whole setup here is what made me talk about it. But dude, I needed to talk about this. I kind of like feel so bad for whoever won this thing. Playing on this thing must be one of the saddest gaming experiences like ever. The entire screen is covered by the man's signature. That is probably like the most insane ego shit I've seen. But now finally, let me hit you up with one of the consoles that changed this entire world, the Nintendo DS. The Animal Crossing DS's. These are probably some of my favorite looking consoles on this list, personally. They're mad cute. All of them are one of a kind based on a different season of the year, as you can see. But not only do they look pretty good, they were given away in a really cool way. This Spring DS was given away in a contest in which you would have to create your own custom Animal Crossing character. The coolest looking Animal Crossing OC would get this really cool Nintendo DS. Here are the top 3 submissions, and they look pretty cool. This is probably one of my favorite competitions we've seen up to this point, honestly. People are just talented, man. I really like these designs. And of course, this guy won the DS. The other two won stuff as well, but I mean, no DS for them. But of course, there's more than just the Spring DS here, so let's talk about some of the other ones. The Summer and the Autumn DSs. Now, this is where things get a little mysterious and questions just start getting unanswered. The summer one, to my knowledge, nobody knows how this was given out. Nintendo worked with some distributor to give these consoles out, right? And this picture was taken by the company who distributed the DS, not whoever actually won it. And we don't even know how it was won, but I mean it looked kind of raw at least, right? I also mentioned the autumn one though, and this one is slightly less a mystery. It's just still really confusing though. Some retro gaming store apparently just received it. The reasoning was like they were so trustworthy with Nintendo that they were awarded the console for being just so cool with Nintendo. I call bullshit on that. I doubt Nintendo actually gave this specific store the DS randomly. I assume the winner of whatever contest has had gave the store the DS or sold it to them or something. Because we do at least know the store actually got the DS. Then one of the employees held on to it and then told this whole story of the store just getting it. But I just think it's all kinda odd. I don't really think he's lying, I just think we're missing like a really big part of the picture here. I feel like it's pretty safe to assume it was given away in some contest or raffle. I just doubt we'll ever find out for sure. But of course there's still one more, and we actually do have information on it, the winter one. This one was given away in a less cool way. All you had to do to win it was to answer this really piss easy set of questions. And if you got all these piss easy questions right, then you were put into a raffle to be able to win the winter DS. These things are really interesting to me. They're all connected, but at the same time, they all have super different stories. Even if we don't really know how some of them were given away, just them existing is kinda cool enough for me. This really shows us a time where Nintendo did random pointless shit just for the sole reason of pleasing fans. And maybe one day we'll actually get to know everything about these things fully. We gotta move on though. Let me show you some more DS's. Here are the Sundance Film Festival DS's. These systems were auctioned off at the Sundance Film Festival, which is an extremely popular film festival that happens every year in the US. Now, these were auctioned off, sure, but all the proceeds would actually go to charity. Because of that, and because of the fact that these were all one of a kind, people put in a lot of money to get their hands on these things. The brown one got sold to Alan Cumming for $1,500 green one got sold to Poppy Mungop fuck to t for 2500 and the blue one got sold to Jay Moore for a huge 10,000. Since this event was such a big success, Nintendo themselves even donated 13,000 of their own money to go to charity. Now remember that Luigi's Mansion GameCube one in that Nintendo tournament series from earlier? Well this next DS was one in the same series, just a different year. This one being one in 2004. We don't actually know what the games played for this one were, or at least I couldn't find it. But we know who actually won it. Because the kid who won the 2004 Swedish Nintendo Championships would farm every future year of this event. Literally every other winner of this series only won once, but Joachim here won three, which is pretty huge. This dude isn't any random either, he's actually known across the world. Because Joachim Actorhall used to also be one of the best Dota 2 players in the world. That's actually what he's mainly known for, being good at Dota 2. But honestly, this dude is kind of just good at games in general. Winning three of these events is not easy. He's even played in tournaments for games that are just completely different from Dota, like Melee. He entered this pretty huge European Melee event, was actually able to get fifth in doubles right behind players like Armada and Leffen. 
This man is just kind of good at games, man. He's definitely worthy of owning this one-of-a-kind Nintendo DS. Now, so far for the DS, we've talked exclusively about the original model, but this console really only took off when the DS Lite came out, so of course there's a good amount of these, right? First up, we got the Trackmania DS Lite. I think it looks just fine. And to win it, you just had to answer a simple question. But the question is what intrigued me. You had to describe the most unusual place for you to be playing a game of Trackmania DS, and the most creative answer would win the DS. I don't actually know what answer won, but there's a lot of different ways you could fucking answer a question like this. So it really piques my interest of what, you know, what really is the weirdest place to play Trackmania DS. I could think of a couple. Moving on, here's the Professor Layton DS. This is the only console in this video to actually be given away in a Nintendo building itself at the Nintendo World Store. The staff at Nintendo World Store just got a bunch of people, put them in a room, made them all put on hats like they're in some cult, and whoever could solve the most Professor Layton puzzles in 10 minutes won the DS. So it's kind of like a real cult, and that's all I got. Alright, next thing, these two Pokemon DSs. These were both won from different events, but they were similar, so I just bunched them together. First, we got this one with a Pokeball on it. It was for Pokemon's 10th anniversary and was a tournament held in celebration of the anniversary. There was a 12-year-old in under bracket and then just a normal bracket. The two winners of these would get their DSs. And this is just a bit of extra info, but some kid who was actually 13 signed up as being 12 to enter this bracket, and he ended up winning. I thought that shit was funny, because it's really not a big deal, but I know at least one kid out there in the tournament started fuming when they found out this kid was actually 13 the whole time. This other Pokemon one was also won in a tournament, this one being the Pokemon World Championships for 2008, but it was specifically for the card game, and I know that's a very minute detail at first, but I'm saying it because there actually was another version meant for people who did well in the bracket for the game. It just has a slightly different logo. But the difference is, is that the card one is really rare, and the other one has over 100 copies made, and that's all there is to that. And I guess I'll just mention this one because like, fuck it at this point man, the Bratz DS, uh, GameStop sweepstakes. One of a kind system, Bratz console. The Nintendo Wii. I know you're just on the edge of your seat just hearing that name because this is a big one and you know it. With how many people own the Wii, it makes sense for there to be a bunch of different random Wii variants. But as always man, you get the idea, some are more rare than others. So let me show you a couple, starting with the Art of Wii set. Nintendo teamed up with Udon Entertainment and some company called Magic Pony to give away some dope Wiis, right? What happened here is six different Canadian artists made custom designs for Wiis. Each design was completely unique and one of a kind and were given away to fans. It's sadly still not fully known on how these were given away through sweepstakes or a contest or what. All we know is that they had a website at one point with instructions on how to enter, but it's dead obviously and the Wayback Machine didn't even preserve it so it's kind of fucked. There are some really neat looking designs here so I just didn't want to not show these. But we haven't even really seen what they look like in person so they're definitely lost to time. Next up we got another kind of quick one but a cool one, the PAX 2008 Nintendo Wii. This was a prize for either getting first or second at PAX 2008's Omegathon. Omegathon being a tournament at PAX every year where each round played as a different game, just like the championships we talked about earlier, but obviously there was different games. And I'm just gonna show it here. This is a fucking raw game list. You can't tell me it's not. Fucking boom blocks, dude. They had boom blocks. The top two players got their hands on the custom packs Wii, as well as an Xbox 360 and PS3. I mean, they're cool looking for sure, but that's all I got for this one, man. Now I got those out of the way so I can talk about one of the coolest consoles God has ever graced our world with. The DeBlob Wii. Now I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Blob, cause now that I think about it, I can't even actually remember the last time I've seen someone talk about this game. I mean I know about it because I actually owned the game, played it back in the day, you know me, and I low key remember liking it too, but maybe I was a dumb kid and this game isn't talked about for a reason. Back on topic though, a big theme of this game is clearly paint, or coloring in general right, and it's a part of the unique de Blob style. So the sweepstakes you'd enter to win the Wii would actually take inspiration from the game's style, and the contest was to go on the DeBlob website and draw whatever you wanted. The fantastic DeBlob devs would pick three of their favorite designs submitted and give them all DeBlob Wii's. But don't you worry, there were awesome runner-up prizes as well if you didn't make top three. Like winning a copy of the game, or even a DeBlob toy. But maybe you were too hardcore of a Nintendo fan and thought that was a little underwhelming. So I'll show you some more serious Wii's. These two Wiis are so legendary that only the craziest bastards alive would even dare to try to own one. Because you could buy like, 
I don't know, a car with the money needed for one of these. First, the Super Smash Bros. Brawl Wii. I genuinely believe this is the most over-the-top looking Nintendo Wii that will ever exist in our timeline. If this wasn't enough, you know, I'll show you the other side. Bam, Supreme Lord Bowser gracing us with... I swear to God, I've seen this PNG before. I'll pop it up if I find it. And they even gave the Wii like a fucking subtitle, The Brawl, to end them all. They made you want to feel like cool owning this for sure. But enough about me talking about how cool it looks. Let's talk about its history. Only one person was able to win this console by competing in the Super Smash Bros. Brawl American Circuit. Another tournament I know, but this one is probably the coolest in my opinion. This circuit was a set of brawl tournaments that were actually hosted before the game even came out thanks to Nintendo helping run the circuit. Players from across America would enter and try to win this custom Wii that not only has my favorite video game characters Mario and Bowser on it, but is also covered in real crystals. So many crystals that it's estimated at being worth $4,000 in crystal decoration alone. I'd honestly say even if you didn't care for the Wii and you wanted to sell it for 2008 Smash, dude, 4K? Shit. It came with a bunch of other stuff too, here's all that if you care. But uh, yeah, Korean DJ won it, incredible melee player back in the day, again trust me I was there. Couple of the sets from the circuit actually still exist on YouTube which is kind of insane. I'm surprised people actually preserved the footage, it's pretty impressive I won't lie. But let's get back to the point, Korean DJ won this week. But does he still own it? No he definitely doesn't, I don't think anyone knows where this thing is currently to be honest. I assume someone has it? But we just don't know. Korean DJ definitely sold it to someone at some point because it ended up in the hands of some random company that sells rare video game collectibles online. This company tried to sell it on eBay for like $20,000, but no one bid on it, so it went unsold. That was in 2013. It's 2023. So it's a mystery, and it's entirely possible we will never figure out who owns it currently or if it's even still intact. Now, that's a truly insane console. The Brawl Wii is cool as hell. With its history, its look, it's hard to match it. But there's one Wii that's even cooler. The Wii that was made specifically for the Queen of England, the Golden Wii. I feel like a good amount of people actually already know this is a thing. I mean, it's a Nintendo Wii made out of real gold that was meant to be given to the Queen of England. It's kind of absurd. People have heard about it. You know, people have talked about it. But not everybody knows what actually happened to the Wii. And it's kind of interesting. So this console was actually made as a huge marketing stunt by THQ. One of the most prestigious game publishers in history. They made games like... Spongebob, Squarepants, Lights, Camera, Pants, Piglet's Big Game, and De Blob. So THQ being a game publisher wanted to market their next game because they truly believed it would be a hit. A kind of successor to Wii Sports. That game was called Big Family Games. This game sucked complete ass, it was just dog, don't really gotta argue about that one. But you know, THQ thought they could mask the shit this game reaped by just putting a golden Wii next to it, and then giving it to the Queen as a publicity stunt with of course a copy of Big Family Games. Saying like, the Queen of England loves it so you should also buy it, and I feel like you really gotta admire the balls THQ had to do this. That aside though, they send the golden Wii to the Queen in the mail. But uh, guess what, she doesn't even receive it. It was offered Jack because there's some rule against sending the royal family packages, and yeah, that makes sense. So the Golden Wii was just sent back to the THQ office and kind of left there. The company THQ would actually end up like dying and it went out of business, so one of the workers at THQ just kept it. No one's gonna throw away a Wii plated in real fucking gold, right? So after a little while, the guy from THQ actually sold this Wii to a friend. I assume to just get rid of it and make some bread off it. But then that friend sold it to somebody else and then they sold it and it just kind of kept going. This Wii has had quite a few owners. It's been sold in online auctions. The YouTuber Professor actually made a video on how he almost bought it. For some reason, no one wants to hold on to this thing. People have just been buying it then selling it, but at least the thing is okay, to my knowledge. This is probably, in my opinion, the most legendary console period. A Wii made out of real gold sent to the Queen of England, one of a kind. I mean, that's kind of hard to beat, man. The Mario Golf V Jump Cup 3DS XL. This 3DS is super clean, super simplistic. All it really is is Mario taking a nice swing with his little golf club, but it's nice. This was a Japanese exclusive console to get this shit you had to beat the editor-in-chief's scores in the game. If the scores you submitted were better than the editor you might have gotten the console. Only 5 people were actually awarded the 3DS, there's a couple people out there who smashed this dude's record. But you know, tough luck buddy, maybe next time you'll get the 3DS. 
And the other one I'm going to show is the Pokemon Dragon King 3DS, a simple Japanese Pokemon tournament to win this one. But damn, dude, the design, the coloring, it's really well done, honestly. I feel like this could almost pass as being a real 3DS. You could just go to Target and purchase. Now, there's a lot more 3DSs I could talk about, but most of them are either signed or they drew on it with Sharpie. You know, it's cool, but I don't really want to count it. So if that disappointed you, I'm going to disappoint you again with the Wii U. I mean, the console failed. You can't blame me for this one. There are like two things I could find that are remotely interesting. And they barely even cut it. Like here we got the Chibi Robo Photo Finder. A max of five of these things exist. This is the only one to actually be featured in like a Nintendo Direct, which is pretty cool. You could have won it by having the coolest looking photo in this dumb 3DS Chibi Robo game. The Wii U is simple, but it's neat. They even print your name on it, so you get a custom Wii U from Nintendo with your own name on it. That's a pretty cool concept, I think, anyway. Even if there isn't anything else special looking about the thing. Oh, and uh, here's the other Wii U I care to talk about. It looks clean as hell, and there's no denying that. But man, it's just so boring, dude. All it is, is just a one-of-a-kind red Wii U that was made for some trade show. Looks really cool, but that's it, and that's depressing. So I'm gonna lighten the mood up a bit and talk about the Virtual Boy, the objective hardest Nintendo console miss. If you didn't know, this console had a whopping 22 games to play on if you count every single region, and everyone just hated this thing. It just didn't work, it wasn't fun. You could have more fun playing Goosebumps Horror Land for the Wii. And I just found out this took four years to develop. That must have been depressing for the developers. Four years for 22 games to be made on it. Dude, if I helped to make this thing personally, I'd retire. Though you may be wondering how did the console with only 22 games on it get any kind of console variant? Well, it was kind of made as a joke. There was this TV network called G4. It was just a channel where it focuses purely on gaming. I've never actually heard of this in my life until now. I've never seen anyone talk about this either. So it's really no surprise it failed twice. But when they were still a thing, they did a little sweepstakes making console variants with this like gift wrapping type theme. But they also threw in a custom Virtual Boy, probably for just some sick and twisted joke. So yeah, it's a thing. This is the only custom Virtual Boy to actually be publicly given away to my knowledge. It looks really disappointing. Yes, the Virtual Boy is already red, so it's a really lame variant. But it's at least cool that a Virtual Boy variant exists, you know what I mean? Alright, now we're done with all that, you know, we can move on to the Nintendo Switch, the big man himself. The most recent Nintendo console produced that turns 7 years old in 6 months. I'm gonna be completely honest here, this thing has outsold the Nintendo Wii at this point. So this console has just the most random shit known to man. There's so many Switch variants that I can fucking jump scare you with pictures of Switches. That scare you? I hope that made you shit yourself. The Odd World Strangers Wrath Nintendo Switch. This is probably the weirdest thing in this video, and I talked about the Orange Soda Game Boy earlier. I just wish it had some really cool storyline and backstory, but of course it was just given away as per fucking usual with these things. I wish they just did something cooler, man. If I didn't have information on this thing and you told me that I had to do some kind of blood pact or ritual to get my hands on this thing, I probably would have believed you. But now you already kind of get how out there stuff for this system is. Some of them only customize the dock itself, like this one's, which is actually kind of cool. It's Diva's mech, but as a Switch dock, custom controller too. I mean, it's just really impressive looking. There's so much random cool stuff like this, but none of them really, like, tell me a full story, bro. I won't lie, like, the main thing that piqued my interest was the Bitcoin miner switch of all things. Yeah, that time when everyone on the internet was gaslit into thinking a cooking mama game would mine crypto on your little Mario system. To my knowledge, it never mined shit, it was just a weird ass cooking mama game. Well, it got its own limited edition Switch. This baby is a one of a kind console, given away on the official cooking mama TikTok. Now that would be it, but I actually found something interesting while looking into this console here. The TikTok account that gave this away used to be called at Cookstar Cooking Mama. Makes sense, for marketing is pretty much just the name of the game. But they ended up changing their account name to just at Cookstar. So they could advertise their new game, Yum Yum Cookstar. They straight up killed Cooking Mama. All the Bitcoin mining allegations actually caught up to them, so they only sold like two copies of the game. Pissed off with all this shit attached to their new Cooking Mama. They just made the same game again, but then removed Mama, so you wouldn't realize it's the same game. And looking at the likes on these TikToks, my guess is that this actually did work and they sold about probably 8 copies this time is my rough estimate. 
Now I'm here sitting down looking at more of these consoles, right? And man, there's just so much of this random crap that's just rare because they didn't bother making more of one of these consoles. You can't tell me some of this stuff is really cool, man. Of course you got the random bangers like the Xenoblade Switch, but that's kinda it. I mean, to be honest, at this point of time we're in, it makes sense for most things to just be sweepstakes or giveaways, but it doesn't feel as special anymore. It happens with 90% of systems, even if the system does look really cool, I mean. The person who earned it just fucking retweeted your dumbass tweet. The people who fought for stupid shit like the Luigi's Mansion Cube, or bankrupt companies making Nintendo Wii's for political figures, that time's kinda closed, I feel. But don't get me wrong, I mean, it completely makes sense if you host a tournament, people want money, give them some fucking money, they earned it. I guarantee you they do not want your dumbass Switch. This kind of stuff has always been cool to me though. Even if you don't care about what game the system was based on, they were always kind of special to even exist, you know what I mean? But the time is over, and it's kind of okay that the time is over. At the end of the day, thinking about it, looking at these, rarity has kind of been the last thing I cared about in my mind. I showed a lot of different systems, and a good amount of them were one-of-a-kind consoles. But dude, who cares? Sure, it's rare to the world and that holds monetary value, but I personally think the cooler kind of value is what looking at the system does for you. If you're genuinely happy to own it, and just looking at a coat of paint can give you that dopamine rush that you so desire, then that's truly a rare console. Not every piece of hardware can give you joy by just looking at it. So I hope today I spread at least a little bit of that joy to you by looking at some dumbass variants on the internet yet again. I'll see you around, man.